Tonight on Canyons News, we take a look at a local organization that is giving former incarcerated people a second chance at education. Then, we visit an event that helps shelter dogs find a home. And finally, we see how an auction for charity lights up the city. Canyons News starts now. With news from across the Santa Clarita Valley, this is Canyons News. Hello everyone and welcome to Canyons News. I'm Xander Grable and here's the latest from the, from the Canyons Newsroom. Locals are up in arms and students are walking out of class over a recent discussion at a Hart School District meeting. Canyons News reporter Christopher Casey takes a closer look at the situation. Students across the William S. Hart Union High School District walked out of classes in protest last week waving flags and asking for the schools to stay as a safe place for LGBTQ plus students over a discussed district rule called parental notification, or what some are calling it a force outing policy. It would require school staff to report LGBTQ plus students to their parents without consent within a 72 hour period. A discussed action that has caused an uproar in many Hart families and has some former school staff from other districts angry. I think it's a big mistake. If a child feels safe on sharing their sexual identity with their parents, they will. And it's not up to teachers to step in the middle. This rule is similar to ones made in Tamluca and Orange County schools. Many LGBTQ plus clubs on hard campuses and Instagram pages like Rise Up SCV, Our Schools Santa Carita, and much more opposed to the policy have also shared their minds about it. One of the pages that helped form the walkouts, Hard Student Walkout, are one of the more bigger pages in this situation. The Instagram account runner, Heather DeCozer, gives a statement when asking her opinion about the issue. She stated that how, quote, I feel that the policy being in place would cause a lot of problems in the school district. It would cause a lot of students to reach their breaking point mentally. They would get kicked out, get abused, and it would be horrible for our school district. A big argument about the policy is how it violates some California educational codes that being Section 200 and 220, and the state law with that being Government Code Section 11135. While there is people who don't support this new rule, there are some who do and some that want to try to look for a middle ground. The chair of the Moms for Liberty LA chapter, Karen Frost, gave us a statement when asking her questions about the policy, stating, quote, We just need to start listening to each other, like really listening to each other and meeting our kids where they are and meeting their needs. To stop making assumptions about one side or the other. I just want people to start listening and not just emotionally reacting. When trying to contact the Hart District about the situation and the policy as a whole, they are not able to comment back. But the superintendent of the Hart District, Mike Coleman, did make a statement about the protests from last Wednesday by saying how they understand that this can affect people and we're going to do a board meeting that night at Hart High School. The Hart District has not fully decided on ratifying the rule, but will decide on it in a future board meeting. For Canyons News, I'm Christopher Casey. An organization is giving hope to formerly incarcerated individuals. The goal is to help them to achieve more with higher education. You know, even though there was a program that served uh, Students who have been involved in the criminal justice system can face significant barriers to academic and career success. Rising Scholars is an organization who hopes to change that. Um, the general premise of Rising Scholars is to support folks that are coming home um, or have, have any experience with the criminal legal system and want to continue their higher education, um, whether that means you know continuing to a BA or PhD or the trades. And the goal of that is to give folks more options so that they don't return to carceral spaces. Representatives from other Rising Scholar programs around the state at schools such as Fullerton and CSUN came to the meeting last Thursday in person and on Zoom. Their goal is to help campus faculty set their own programs up here at College of the Canyons. Um, I'm just hoping to achieve uh, more equity for our students and um, to basically just teach more students, bring education also to the community to see if we can get more community involvement with these students and help in terms of um, employment, uh, employability, 
accessibility to community resources, things like that. One of these students, Lily Gonzalez, was a formerly incarcerated individual who now hopes to teach others about how valuable Rising Scholars is by reflecting on her own past. My Rising Scholars is personally important to me because I identify as someone that has been directly impacted by incarceration. I am formerly incarcerated. I came home in um, 2011 and I know the power of higher education and um, higher education also re reduces recidivism. Um, if folks have a bachelor's degree, the recidivism rate is probably 3% instead of 76%. And for folks with a master's degree, that's zero. People like Lily have made it a goal in life to give others the same opportunity she was given all those years ago. Rising Scholars is that opportunity. We hope to see Rising Scholars be more prominent on campus. Reporting for Canyons News, I'm Xander Grable. Three people were injured after strong winds knocked over a light pole at Disneyland. Two park guests were treated on scene, and a third was rushed to a nearby hospital. According to Santa Ana police, the light pole was knocked over at approximately 8.30 a.m. This happened the same morning that the second highest gust of wind was recorded in California history. The National Weather Service recorded a 130 miles per hour gust at the Magic Mountain Truck Trail. We are yet to, we are yet to receive an update on the condition of the hospitalized guest. According to the experts, the wind speeds will be dropping this weekend. Abandoned animals were given a second chance at finding a home, at finding a forever home. Canyons News reporter Natalie Perez gives a look at how a partnership between agencies paid off. What if finding a forever home was based off a blind date? The Castaic Animal Care Center hosted a pet adoption day at the Mitchell Ranch House for residents to meet and potentially adopt shelter dogs in search of homes. It brings awareness to the facility. Uh, a lot of people don't know we even exist, unfortunately, in the community. And uh, it helps showcase the animals that are uh, overlooked at the care center. Residents were given the opportunity to interact with the dogs, as well as learn about the animal services offered by the city. Booths range from the Santa Clarita Public Library to Hills Pet Nutrition by Petco, each giving their own expertise on adopting a four-legged friend. The most important thing is to let the community know that we care about pets, right? It's not about like, hey, we're here to sell you something, but ultimately everybody that works for Petco, we care about pets. Like that's our number one priority. We can find you a home. For volunteers who have been working with the shelter animals for months, each adoption becomes a personal triumph. This is my first event, and I think somebody's being adopted out there, so I'm excited about it. <laughs> so it's a good feeling. You know, I, I was thinking about that this morning, you know, coming out here. It's like, you know, you're finding a home for a little creature that needs one. For Canyons News, I'm Natalie Perez. If you want to bring home a new forever friend, you can visit the Castaic Animal Shelter. Visit their website for hours or to make an appointment. West Ranch High School Theater Performance is introducing audiences to a new world. Canyons News reporter Katherine Brooke takes us behind the curtain. Long dream, eating all the flavor beans. Top five. Booger. Whether they're on stage, directing lights, running lines, or changing costumes, the wizardly magic behind West Ranch Theater can all be brought back to stage manager Jordan Vreeves. Oh. One more breath in. Out. So I love getting to be the person who gets to kind of like run the ship and help make sure that everyone else can do their jobs to the best of their ability. Remember, trust each other, focus, lock in. You all are amazing. Because for her, a performance is more than just telling a story. Getting to be a part of something that transported us somewhere else, I thought that was just like so fun. And I loved the art of like getting to put something together and watch it come to life. Thank you so much. Enjoy the show. We will. Having worked both in the spotlight and now backstage, she has a rooted sense for what each performance needs. All right, let's warm up. Like, knowing that I can trust in myself and the people around me to do their jobs and knowing that I can do mine has, like, really built, like, a really strong sense of, like, confidence and pride within myself. One, two, three, four, nine, nothing! And her experience has fostered close relationships it's where I found my family. It's the place where I've like met the friends that I know I'm gonna keep 
for a very long time. And it's a safe place for me to it, it be me. But I think Puffs has really like solidified the moment where I was like, I love doing this and this is what I, I want to do. Now she'll be pursuing a life in the arts. I want to go to college to get a technical theater degree and become a stage manager um, in like for Broadway and stuff. That's like my dream. For Canyons News, I'm Katherine Breck. We hope you guys enjoy the show and welcome to the Puffs. Before you pack on some turkey, you might also want to pack some patience. With Thanksgiving tomorrow, the traffic across Southern California is already feeling the holiday crush. AAA says more than 4.6 million people in SoCal will be driving more than 50 miles this Thanksgiving, which would be the third highest number since 2000. And airports are also expected to be busy as the TSA is expecting to screen 30 million travelers over the next few days. Experts recommend the best way to get to your destination on time is to get out early, avoid distraction, distracted driving, and stay calm. Or, possibly the best way to be the traffic, just staying home altogether. And for people that enjoy being in their cars, a tasty classic car community event rolled into town. Canyons News reporter Julianne Lena has more. This past week, on Sunday the 12th, car enthusiasts of the Santa Clarita Valley gathered for the highly anticipated Burgers and Brews car show. From shiny lowriders to trucks with lots of character, this year's event featured a dazzling display of horsepower and elegance. At the event, held in front of Valencia's Fun Burger restaurant, attendees got a good taste of cool cars and a sizzling burger. Along with these timeless cars, attendees were also able to enjoy a wide array of booths that celebrated car culture. This show was not just about showing off the best car, it gave community members the opportunity to connect with those who share the same love for these machines. Each of the vehicles present came with a story. For Ray Luna, his connection with his vehicle goes beyond just mechanics. Well, you know, I, I follow a lot of these guys and I come to support, you know, and the, this place puts on a pretty good event all the time. So, yeah, it's fun. If you look around, they're going to show you some really nice cars here. So, yeah, it's, that's what it's about. Yeah, it's a perfect day for it before the rain comes, so. <laughs> Ray brought his vintage Volkswagen to the event, the same model of car his family owned his whole childhood. Ray's love for his car is so driven that he even got a tattoo and a mini Volkswagen for his small companion. This show proved that the love for cars brings communities together. For Canyons News, I'm Julianne Lena. The Santa Clarita Valley Boys and Girls Club kicked off the holiday season with their 21st annual Festival of Trees auction event. Canyons News reporter Shalisa Curlpun is here to tell us more. Welcome to the 21st annual Festival of Trees! With the holiday season just around the corner, the Boys and Girls Club of Santa Clarita hosted their 21st annual Festival of the Trees auction, an event that makes this season more merry and bright. So Festival of Trees is a fundraiser that supports the Boys and Girls Club of Santa Clarita Valley. So what we're doing is auctioning off amazing, beautifully designed trees and gingerbread houses and wreaths that were all designed by volunteers um, that spent countless hours putting it all together. And then all the funds that from the auction go to support the Boys and Girls Club of Santa Clarita. 600, now seven, Serana with you at six. Asking $700, don't miss it. Six is big. Guests of the event not only find joy in the event kicking off the holiday season, but also making a difference in the lives of the kids they are supporting. So I hope that guests leave, uh, you know, enjoying their evening as well as knowing that they're making a difference in the lives of kids here in Santa Clarita, that their attendance, their participation, that their support is going to a good cause and it's going to help the future of our community. Others also find community within the event. Events like this are what make a community an actual community when everybody gets together, everybody who has got their own life going on, their own little whatever is important to them, but then we all get together to support a, a bigger cause like the Boys and Girls Club. When we all get together to take care of a bigger cause, that's what makes a community. For Canyons News, I'm Shalisa Curlpine. After the break, we head over to the Canyons News Sports Desk with Elijah Dixon. Here's what's coming up next. We find out more about the voice of Cougar Sports. And then, 
we watch a local strongman put his strength to the test. Stay tuned. In a home fire, can your family safely escape in two minutes? I heard my oldest son holler for mommy, and all I could see was smoke. The boys, we never really worked with them, I guess, on telling them what to do if there's a fire. We lost our child. We lost everything. Make sure you can safely escape a fire. Practice your two-minute drill. Test your smoke alarms monthly. Make your plan today. The future is yours. So let College of the Canyons help you get ready, reset, and go for it. Get ready for transfer, the workforce, or take your skills to the next level. Reset your career and get back to work quickly. Go to college for $46 per unit. Zero textbook costs class options and apply for your share of financial aid. With convenient class times, flexible on-campus or online options, and free tutoring, the future is yours at College of the Canyons. Visit canyons.edu slash schedule. Welcome back to, from the break. I'm Elijah Dixon, and here's the latest from the Canyon Sports Desk. It is the end of a dynasty at heart, as the two legendary coaches step down from their positions. Last week, Rick Harrington announced that he is retiring as head football coach of the Hart High Indians, and his brother, Mike, a former Hart head coach, also will no longer serve as an assistant coach. The two patrolled the same sidelines for 38 years, and this is, will be the first time Harrington hasn't played or coached for the sidelines in 19, since 1975. Last April, Rick had a heart transplant and still didn't miss any games this season. Both brothers marked an, uh, marked an era and leave behind a legacy of excellence. A replacement has not yet been named. Mike retired in 2019. Turning to COC Sports, the men's basketball team was back in the cage after a rough two-game road trip. Canyons tipped off against Chafee as they looked to snap their two-game losing streak. This was a hard-fought battle between two teams looking to prove a point this season. Canyon started off with a dribble drive and a miss, which was the story of the night for the Cougars. Chafee came down with a pull-up from three, but couldn't convert, a rare occurrence for them during the game. Mason Savory then loses the ball, which is something that the Cougars did 20 times on the night. Canyons end in a 77-62 loss. Meanwhile, six games into this, the COC women's basketball team is still searching for its identity. Is, the team, is this the team who cruised to the title, the PCC Classic, or the same squad that dropped three of the past four? The Cougars squaring off with the Sequoias on Tuesday night, and the Cougars on the move early. Jade Sims with the easy basket, but here come the visiting team. Lucia Ritchie inside to Anissa Torres. Sequoias up 17 at the half. Would the Cougars see the gap on the scoreboard close? It's possible. Early second half here, Aaliyah Garcia dribbles and finds some space and scoops two of her 16, but Sequoias continue to find the open player. This time it's great ball movement from Gozo Jones in the corner. She's feeling it and hits three of her 13. The Cougars certainly can't blame Sims for the loss. She had 23 points, but the Cougars drop another as the Sequoias win 74 to 54. I definitely think that we were intimidated by the starting lineup of Sequoias being changed and I think that that definitely affected us in a way because we already had our matchups and I definitely think we could have, one, understood our plays more, we didn't go through our plays well enough today and then I also think we could have just been way better on the defensive side, like their Sequoias was being super aggressive and we weren't fighting back in that aspect. While all eyes are on the field, there's a one voice heard throughout every game. Canyons news reporter Jonathan Garcia brings us into the booth. So no scores, we continue on just a little bit more than a minute in. And As time begins to tick throughout a sports game. Just six of 23 from the floor. There is a voice telling a story behind each and every game. Chafee can't get the run out though as the pass was just too far ahead of Simon. Matt Robinson is the guy you might see at every COC sporting event. Matt has been the play-by-play -play announcer for COC since 2019. But he's also spent time a part of COC's athletic program as a former hockey player. Like many student athletes would know, one rewarding shot could open opportunities, specifically for Matt with his performance in the booth. 
That'd be fun. I like sports. I've always loved, you know, being around sports. I played hockey, I played baseball growing up. So I was like, it, it'd be something cool to do. I don't mind talking in front of a microphone or in front of people. It's not really something that scares me. With Matt being a man of many talents, not only is it crucial for him to share it virtually, but also for many of the student athletes to share it across the world. We do the live streams for them, for their parents who are out of town, can't make it to a game, for the kids to be able to have some tape and be able to go and throw that up on the web and get themselves recruited. That's really where it started with football. Athletes like CLC's football team knows that striving for perfection consists of time. Trusting the process is a difficult factor even this industry faces. For a broadcaster, that's your, your largest asset, right? You know, you're, especially for play-by-play, -play, your voice has to be in good shape. And it's not something that happens overnight, it takes time. I remember when I first started, I would lose my voice constantly because I didn't understand how to use it as an instrument. Discipline is one of the toughest lessons any athlete goes through during a learning process. One thing every coach or role model shares is learn how to enjoy the moment even during the tough times. As long as I'm having fun, I'll come and, I'll come and do this. As long as I, as, once it stops being fun is when you stop doing stuff. So as long as I'm having fun, I mean, I'd do this for the rest of my life. This, this is what I like to do. For Canyons News, I'm Jonathan Garcia. Shepherd. Meantime, Bill Belichick led New England to six Super Bowl wins in just 17 years, but he wasn't the only coach nor team building an early 21st century dynasty. For the fifth time in 22 years and the third in the past five years, the CLC women's golf team won the state championship in Paso Robles. Head coach Gary Peterson's squad took the title by 14 shots over runner-up Mount San Antonio College. Moko Shimoji led the Cougars, finishing in second place. Another CLC golfer, Flora Pune, shot a final round 70, 75 to cap the eighth place finish. Samoji and Peterson talked about CLC's latest conquest. Honestly, I don't know how everybody <laughs> felt, but we just wanted to win. We wanted to, you know, do. It's my last season here, so I knew I wanted to do well for the team and for the coach, of course. So I think that's what brought us to do better on the second day. They peaked at the right time. And I think it's, it goes to teamness. It goes to realizing that these moments are special. And I, I've been doing this long enough and been at enough state tournaments that I know that each of them is a special moment. And I wanted to make sure that the, the players understood that. And I wanted to make sure that they reached for as high of a rung on the ladder as they could on that last day. More than 1,000 swimmers gathered in Santa Clarita for the annual Cranberry Classic. Kenya's news reporter, Nareg Charkadian, tells us more. Light rain and gray clouds weren't enough to stop this swim meet at the Santa Clarita Aquatic Center. The Cranberry Classic is a chance for swimmers under 18 to come from all over Southern California and compete with some of the best from their peers. Coach Kyle Hastings from the Host Canyons Aquatic Club knows just how big this event really is. From a community aspect, it's, it's incredible. Um, to have 1,100 people from Southern California all gathered in a place and celebrating swimming and celebrating their own teams and competition again and seeing the smiles on the kids' faces, it's, it's incredible. The large crowds gathered to support family and community this past weekend. While it is a huge swim meet, Coach Hastings knows it's about more than just swimming. My favorite thing so far this weekend is watching the kids enjoy themselves, enjoy them being around their, their own teams. The last few years in swimming look different to say the least. COVID restrictions wouldn't allow meets like the Cranberry Classic to be at full power. But now, swimmers and coaches are ready to celebrate the whole show. To see everybody come back and support each other. Um, it's, it's fantastic as a, as a head coach. I've been here for about a year and a half. And that has been our goal, is to rebuild the culture that was you know, pre-COVID pre years. Events like this help kids throughout the entire community come together 
through the sport of racing, through the sport of swimming to race. What's better than keeping the kids safe Overdo the kick -outs, please. and letting them have fun? For Canyons News, I'm Narek Charkhadyan. Being a competitive strongman is about pushing your physical strength and mental toughness to the limit. Canyons News reporter Anthony Riley brings us to a local athlete that is lifting with a purpose. Tyler Bjorklund is not your average man, from his stature to his strength. Tyler could easily identify with the men he saw compete in strongman. Like big bumbly dudes who were just like really kind and now when they went out and competed like you know they would grunt or they would get angry or something but I, I related to that a lot. For all of the feats of strength Tyler has shown in competitions, Strongman reminded him of the even stronger bond he had with someone special. I remember when I was a little kid I watched World's Strongest Man with my grandpa. I, I vaguely remember certain things with him because I was so young but I did have a very uh, close, close relationship with him. World's Strongest Man with him like once. But the, that was the number one thing that popped up in my head when every time I think of him. Moving heavy weights in the gym can be like overcoming hardships in life. Through adversity, true character is shown. Reflection on life and who you are as a person, like how you conduct yourself when no one's looking. If you, if you come in here and you're slacking, you know, and you do that on a regular basis, that's going to reflect in your life. Motivation is normally what pushes people to keep sharpening their skills. But Tyler has other motives to help push him to stay consistent with training. Most of the time I'm not motivated at all to go to the gym. I just have a goal in mind and that's what pushes me. And as far as work goes, like every day I'm tired. You know, there's times where I'm working 10 hour shifts. Faith is something important to Tyler. Using his God-given strength, Tyler competes in strongman to push himself and to spread a bigger message. The reason why I do strongman is just because, like I said, it's a talent of mine and I just want to see how far I can go and bring God glory as much as I can in this realm of my life. For Canyons News, I'm Anthony Riley. Finally, Canyons, wants, Canyons News wants to congratulate COC women's soccer team. A magical run ended in the second round of the playoffs to Chafee College last night. And good luck to the COC football team who will be playing Citrus in the Western State Bowl game on Saturday in Glendora. That does it for this edition of Canyons News. I'm Elijah Dixon. Remember, you can catch us on the web at canyonsnews.com. You can also send us news tips and story ideas to our Twitter handle, canyonsnews underscore COC, and follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Have a good night, everybody, and happy Thanksgiving.